Come to Filmmakers Anonymous. That's our club. It's where filmmakers go. It's our central hub. Handheld, tripod, camera shaking. So come and join us for all your filmmaking. Nolan, Scorsese, but not Michael Bay. And if you like Twilight, then you better Amscray. Don't need MasterCard. Don't need Visa. You don't join us. Welcome back, everybody, to the second episode of the Filmmakers Anonymous Show, our weekly podcast to discuss all things cinema. This is Mike Woodard. I'm the club's president, and I'm joined by Kelly, our vice president. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Costa, our treasurer. What's up? Tyler, our secretary. Hi, everyone. And I'm joined by Brianna, a current film club member. Brianna, hi. do you want to say hi? No? Hi. Okay. All right. And I'm actually joined by two ten former presidents, Kat Parker, who's still a member and was president last year, and our very special guest today... Amber Fisher. <laughs> 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 hi, you want to say hi, guys? <laughs> they don't speak French, Kat. Aloha. Aloha. Hi. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm leaving now. That was my guest appearance. Okay. <laughs> and she's gone, everybody. Oh, I hope you enjoyed yay. it. <laughs> but no, seriously, here with us, Amber Fisher. She's also the star of another podcast, which you can find on YouTube, The Super Awesome Film Show. Yep. Right? Tom cool. K. No. Okay. New episodes just started, right? The or... uh, episode called Jean Claude Grand Dam. Yeah. That okay. Episode. All right. Cool. We have really weird titles. <laughs> that, that, it's whatever we talk about. Weird. We smush it all together, and Alpha said Jean. He accidentally meant to say Jean Claude Van Dam. He said Jean Claude Grand Dam. <laughs> <laughs> that, hey, that was it. Great title. Yep. Great title. And speaking of our social media, you can also find us on Facebook by searching UMBC's Filmmakers Anonymous on Facebook. You can tweet us at UMBCFA, and you can watch previous episodes of the show on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash UMBCFA. All right, everybody. So, we are nearing the end of a pretty big era in films. Advanced tickets just went on sale for Breaking Dawn Part 2, Twilight. Oh. Ah, got you all. <laughs> I was like... <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's what exactly what I was going for. Um, so with Twilight coming to a near end, and with the recent trends in novels brought to films and various different recent. It's, okay, it's, very it's, recent, it's, Tyler. It's, Harry Potter only ended what like a few years. I'm saying I'm saying like. For, like big. You mean like book adaptate like well big series? right like okay. big series adaptations. I was gonna say like they've been making adaptations. I, I know they have been since making the adaptations for a while. Thank well, you. Well, <laughs> I think now that it used to be that they would make adaptations of, from books, but they wouldn't market it a lot as being adaptation. And a lot of times they would change the name. They would change a lot of things about it. So I guess now like if it gets more blatant adaptations, and that's how it's being marketed. Well, right. Well, they're being pulled right to films. Um, yeah. Right. I'm see. See, the reason I just brought up Twilight was just because it's the, it's one of the more recent big hits where it's starting to follow the trends of, um, of like trying to extend a book way beyond what you know. Like this, this is a fourth Twilight film. It's, it was we had eight Harry Potter films. It was an unnecessary <laughs> part two when you if you watch the first one you're like. This isn't a movie. You can make this in like a, a like a a montage, se like a Rocky montage sequence in like five minutes, and they decided to make a whole long movie about it. And I was like, it's still stupid. Oh yeah. <laughs> what I've always learned about that is like, isn't a sequel already like a different part? Is it really like part four, part two? Then it's like I'm kind of confused. Well, right, and then they have like you know Harry Potter, you know part. But Harry uh, Potter made sense because that was a a much bigger book than whatever the last Twilight book was. It was, they didn't do it to make, I mean, obviously the studio's doing it to make money and to elongate obviously. it, but yeah. to be fair to the people that read the book, there's a lot of content in it. So it made sense to make it longer because if not, then you're going to get all the Harry Potter fans who are like, yeah, was not you know, like, cool. cut it up. Or you'll <laughs> turn into what uh, the, um, what the Hunger Games did, which if you read the Hunger Games book in the last... They like cut the the ending of the Hunger Games in the movie, like what the book is. They like shrunk it into like five minutes, and there's like at least two chapters worth of stuff that they like <laughs> just threw away. Well, the irony in Harry Potter is that Deathly Hallows wasn't even the longest book in the whole series. Yeah. But since it was the last one, they felt the need to. It was actually, but it was more dense than any of the other books. There's mm -hmm. a lot of stuff going on, but 
Um, they did leave stuff out in the other. Well, and the whole point, the reason I'm bringing all this up is that the question today is, what's the best way to adapt a book or some, uh, you know, other similar type of source material to the screen? Because there's a, because when you go to a film, you know, they're making these films to be aimed at movie goers. You know, they, they need to appeal to fans of the book, but they also have to make the films watchable for people who haven't read the books. And that's the conflict that the Harry Potter books faced, you know, that the movies faced for, what, the decade. And that's why each Harry Potter has always, like, mixed reviews from everybody. Everybody. I mean, I think there's a general consensus about which ones are the best in the series, but a lot in the middle gets, you know, goopy because they dropped out big story elements. And... But then we have part one and part two, where it's just full on, um, you know, it's just, you know, they just pulled everything from the book and said, here you go, we're just presenting it in two parts. Well, I think when you're trying to adapt a book or a comic book or what have you, I think the, the biggest issue is that you are trying to reach out to an audience of, you know, moviegoers that have not read the book. So they'll care less about the content. It's more about the visual aspect if it's you know just interesting. But then you have the core fans that have read the books or the comic books, and actually the funny thing is more than half the time they end up are the ones that are you know pissed off at the movie. You know <laughs> they're the ones that are most critical. I mean especially with Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, or the Spider Man or Batman movies. It's all the same. The fans are the ones that are most upset. The just standard moviegoer could care less. They're like, oh, I want explosions, I want killing, I want, you know, excitement, and you know, that's what they all offer. It's true. I think it's more interesting if a filmmaker takes the general idea of the plot of a book and makes their own movie out of it. Not necessarily going to appeal to the fans of the book at all, but it probably makes for a more interesting story and it has their own take on it instead of just being the same thing. I guess like what we could take away from our discussion is maybe for the, the filmmaker to understand that they can't please everyone, so then just to try to make up their mind. You know, is it just for the fans, or are they just going to aim to be their own interpretation? You know, you can't kind of half-ass and like kind of do like some of what other people want, some of what you want, and it's not really going to turn out that way. I think you have to focus on one thing, and then, you know, if maybe if that's good enough, then try to add a little bit more, but not try to just go back like, in between. Yeah, it's also a different medium too. I mean, books versus movies, and there's not you can't necessarily tell everything that's going to be in a book because that'll be boring to watch. It's like, oh, mm -hmm. you know, some books have chapters where it's like talking about someone walking up the stairs for a whole chapter. You can't film that as a whole movie. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, there's really slow books that never get going, and then so I think by taking by making the movie and, and what Kat said by making it their own, they can kind of add to it and please the half. You know. 50% pleases the book people, 50% pleases the people who haven't read the book. So. Well, the unfortunate thing is that at the end of the day, it's all about which version of the film makes the most money for them. Like when a production company says, oh yeah, we would definitely pay you know, whoever to direct and write and produce you know, a f film based on whatever book, but when they sit down and they talk about which version will be the most successful or make us the most money, the one they're going to go with. They could care less about what the core fans that have read the books and the comics could care, they just like, you know, what movie will put butts in the seats, which one will give us hundreds of millions of dollars in our in our pockets. So I honestly I don't they could really care less about what the content of the film is as long as the profit margins are big, you know, which is the unfortunate case. Well right, and they make it and they make it seem like they're focusing on the on details near the end of the series now because like what was started in Harry Potter was that um they split the last film so that they say to focus more on the story. But now they did the same to Twilight. And can any of us here not imagine them doing the same exact thing to Hunger Games in two they, years? They are doing to right. the, the last the, book to the Hunger Games that I know. Yeah. Now, I've only read the first book, and I've just decided that I'm just going to read the books the week before the movie comes out. Because <laughs> I did read the first Hunger Games, and I was like, I can't wait to see this movie. <laughs> and then I did, and I was like, this was an okay adaptation. Uh, it wasn't <laughs> that great from what I read, but it was only because it was a sloppy script. If you know what I mean. I can see that. It I, was, I can agree with they that. They had, like, interesting parts, but then, like, like I said at the end, 
there's a whole bunch of stuff at the end that I think was important that for people that hadn't read the books, like, it kind of needs to be in there. So it was really weird that they took what you would figure mm -hmm. would be, okay, when you look at a book adaptation to make a script, you're like, these are the important parts of the book that we need in the movie, because if we're going to make a series, it's going to come back, and so we need it in the plot. And they said, let's just, whatever. <laughs> so, like, people are watch, going to watch, going, like, I don't <laughs> understand. And then people in the, the, you know, who read the books are like, well, if you read the, the books, you'd understand, but you don't want to be that person, because it's like, it, it should have been in the movie now, to now, begin with. I, I did not read the book. And I did feel the ending sort of shortchanges the film a little bit. Yeah, it's it, like, it's it, like, okay, we're out. We're on a plane. We're done. The end. And, and Kat, I was like, Kat just looks like really sad. Chapters. There's that guy that she, was, that she was like running around with at the beginning of the movie, and then that was it. I mean, I've never read The Hunger Games either, and I actually kind of have a thing where if, if a movie is made that's based off of a book or a graphic novel, I don't want to see it unless I've read it, because mm -hmm. I'm like one of those people. You know, I still haven't read any of The Hunger Games... Uh, novels, so I haven't seen any of the movies yet. I'm actually probably in the minority. I've only seen the first Lord of the Rings movie because I've only uh, ever read yeah. the, the first Lord of the Rings book. You got through that book? I did. Yes, I, did. <laughs> I couldn't make it past when Gandalf was having the conversation with Frodo that lasted ten pages. <laughs> ten pages long. And all I kept thinking was in the movie, this was done in two minutes in the film. And, and I know all this. And Hobbit into three movies and yeah. the smallest well, book out of all of them. <laughs> <laughs> and, see, and that's going back because now with the Deathly Hollows, they've kind of started like this structure or formula where they break the last book into two parts because it's what makes them the most money. Well, no right. one, because we discussed this in the last podcast, everyone uses the excuse, the movie's too long, I don't want to see it. No one's going to want to sit through a four-hour movie if they were to try and squeeze it all into one film you know, mm. without cutting out any content that you know, makes the plot fuzzy or angers you know, <laughs> hardcore fans. So, it, it, again, it's, it's, I don't know, I know I'm sounding like a broken record, but it's all about the money to these production companies. Split. Well, and they, and they also face that problem that, you know, in case of the Twilights, they try to pump them out so quickly after the oh, success yeah. of the first that's one. That's why they're so they, shitty. R right, well, right, and that, right, of course, that's a completely separate issue. Um, but, and then when they reach the third one, they're like, or the fourth one, they're just like, oh, crap, we're already out of films. <laughs> Well, again, it's, it's, you can call it the Harry Potter effect. It's what all movies will do from this point. Anything based on a book or that has, you know, like three or four books or more in a series, they're going to continue to follow that format. Well, it's also it's now it's just out. like, well, what book series are making, a, like, a lot of money? <laughs> oh, there's that one. What, what the fuck? What's the one with, the, like, that people are having sex reading? I tried reading. Seriously, I tried reading the first book of Fifty Shades of Grey. For, read the first chapter, like, I don't give a shit. So then I'm like, where's the sex at? So I'm like, go in the <laughs> And I'm like, no, this is really what I was doing. I'm pretty sure that's going to be most people's reactions. No. no. And I'm like, where's, where's this? And so then I get to the first sex scene, and I was like, I thought there was going to be, like, whips and chains and shit and like that. And they're like, no, you got to keep on reading. I'm like, no. No, I can't even. I can't even read the first chapter without falling asleep. And then I was like, okay. My sister was like, reached like it's really great. But my sister reads Twilight, so what the fuck does she know? So I'm going through, and then they have like contracts because the guys like all like, oh, let's have a contract. You sign for, we'll be sex slaves together. So I'm reading, and like I can't even read the like sex contract because it was so freaking boring. So, so yeah. Sorry. So I was like, I I couldn't read it. I so think much. I think Amber just woke up like half the listeners. <laughs> Probably half paying attention, like, oh. There's, there's supposedly sex and all kinds of balls and all kinds of things in there. And then, sorry. I don't mean, like, that too, right. but I mean, like, like balls. Like, whatever. Think, Somebody was telling me this. I think the next podcast needs an explicit disclaimer. Right <laughs> Please, because I'm going to cuss either way. And go into oh, we forgot to give him a spoiler warning. Yeah. No, I didn't, oh, read, well, I didn't read the book. Yeah, I didn't read the book. Everybody knows it's about two people having sex for three books, and everybody's going all crazy because they want to make a series out of it. And all the you know the desperate housewife ladies and people like my sister are reading it with her Twilight, whatever. And I'm just like, <laughs> oh my sister. And the way that they're the it, and my sister and them are like, other people are explaining it to me, and they're like, I can't wait for the movie, and I'm like. You guys are want to watch a porn, is what you're telling me. And I'm like, no. And I'm like, no. 
you're telling me like because it gets really explicit with like the sexual content in the book i'm like you think they're gonna do show all that in a movie they it either has to be like rated x <laughs> Or or, or NC seventeen, which they won't do. Which they won't do. So even if they make it, you're gonna get like how you said, like the Harry Potter people. Anybody that's a fan of it are gonna get pissed off because like, well, that didn't happen. <laughs> See, <the laughs> one, she went down on him. In one, this <laughs> one film where a guy will be happy that his girlfriend drags him to, he'll walk out disappointed. Yeah, and and I'm, and I keep on telling everybody, you, they're like, who's gonna get in this movie? I said, well, the best thing would. Uh, some kind of porn company take it over and I'm not really I don't know if it's out there I'm pretty sure it's probably in the making right now as we speak of somebody doing a uh Fifty Shades of Grey porn, and it'll probably be better than the regular movie. People wouldn't allow it. It wouldn't get shown anywhere. I don't think so, because there's like this whole, well, you know... The that's porn. why the guy, <laughs> the boyfriends and the husbands are like, hey, honey, look what I bought. <laughs> <laughs> we can watch it together. <laughs> you got like, 50, the, yeah, the Fifty Shades of Grey. But, it, like the big thing that but you can do that same thing for, same excuse for the people who read the books and then bought it for their significant other. Right. Like, hey, honey, look at this. Look, uh, it's got everything. <laughs> It's three hours long, you know, and they'll watch it. some notes down while you're at it. <laughs> the thing about Fifty Shades of Grey, for the record, I haven't read it, but I did read part of the first Twilight book, and the problem sure, with Rihanna. Fifty Shades of Grey <laughs> is that not only are his problems endemic to Twilight itself, because it's actually derivative of Twilight, it's derivative of Twilight fan Isn't it fiction. like... It's during Twilight, Twilight fan, fan fiction. Isn't, wasn't it based it on was. Twilight? What happened was someone Whatever. wrote a fan fiction this of Twilight, and they changed stuff an around. Awful it was Fifty Shades of Grey, and then they published it as a book. And if anyone knows the fan fiction community and the subculture there, the stuff that happens in Fifty Shades of Grey, that's actually pretty common. <laughs> Most wow. stories are very bad and very poorly written and just shock value. Yeah. So the, wow. this problem, that movie is going to have loads of problems just because it's based off of a book that was based off of fan fiction yeah. of a book. Yeah. So that's, yeah. it's endemic to itself. It's, and it's, and people, yeah, I don't, like, like, I have no reason of reading it along with, like, Twilight, I haven't, because I heard Twilight is poorly written. Oh, it's like, that, that's why I've heard. Written. I read Twilight, and it's really, really right? badly written. Right? <laughs> <laughs> <See, laughs> you're an English major. I, I, I think it's, it's, yeah. it's really bad. It was painful. Twilight itself is pretty much fan fiction. I haven't it's read. Really I haven't it's read Twilight. Slow kind of book. I'm glad yeah. you haven't read yeah. Twilight. No, no, otherwise no. I, no, I did. I did. <laughs> he has read Twilight. I did. No, no. I've seen the films. <laughs> okay. I, no, and actually, okay, to Mike. specify, I seen. I saw the first three. I think. I and to the, so that's to three midnight, too many. Right? Midnight, I only saw the first two. Midnight movie screening <laughs> of the third Oh, well, I've, I've seen the it first one. I saw the first one. Wait a second, I thought about you saying And and, and let me let me, let me just, let me just let me just point out put the, let me just put this on the record. New Moon is completely useless. That whole you story, the that, no, no, the, the entire is series useless, is useless. But at least in the continuity of that story, New Moon is just absolutely useless. You could have skipped over New Moon, jumped right to Eclipse, and you didn't miss anything. Well, it's true. You know, you wrote a horrible book as an author when people can read it and can all already know what the inevitable ending of the last book in the series is going to be. They live happily uh, ever after with their vampire child. Woo -hoo. They have sex <laughs> until Buffy comes and stabs them. Yeah. That's, that's how I'm living. And, and interesting, you know how we were mentioning how you market a movie like Shades of... Well, we mm -hmm. you know touched on how you market a movie like Shades of Grey. This yeah. certainly helps. It's revealed that Ryan Gosling is being considered for the role of Christian Grey. Ew. So that that is going to help that's at least. <laughs> yeah, that is that's weird. That's the only thing why I, the reason I watched that movie, though. And, but see, but see what you just said there? That's exactly what that's 50 million happen. people are going to that's say. Oh, happen. Ryan Gosling's and in it. And when I say it, it watch it, I mean, I'll just wait till illegal, like somebody watch it online. <laughs> I mean, that's how I'll do it. That's why I've watched all the Twilight movies. I'll be, I don't just, care. Come just watch. Like, it's, it's almost a crime watch. They'll say tree like any other form of pornography, right? right. <laughs> <laughs> you just feel really guilty after watching. I didn't feel guilty. I just felt dirty and just took a shower because of how crappy it was. <laughs> Anyway, we, we can go on forever about how bad Twilight is. I guess we should move on to another movie adaptation or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, uh, Costa... We should talk about um, how to make a good adaptation, like our title is going to say. Well, you actually <laughs> expect us to follow our main topic? Come on, Madness. Tyler. <laughs> I think by discussing, we're kind of getting to our answer. Well, well we right, right. We were reaching, we were reaching that point. Adaptations of Shakespeare. <laughs> And everybody silences and leaves the room. I Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> Wait, Romeo and Juliet or Romeo plus Juliet? Uh, or, that, or Nomeo uh, and Juliet. Both. Uh, or Nomeo and Juliet 2, which is officially in the works. No. 
Yes, it is. And no, the, I'm saying no, I have that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. I was about to say, it is in the works. That, uh, what was it, the, the modern version of Hamlet? Or whatever. Oh, is that the one that starred Ethan Hawke? Or? Yes. Yeah. I, I had to watch that for an English class. Besides besides Bill Murray being in it, there's like no redeemable plot point to that movie. Anything with Bill Murray in a period is just... I awesome. love Bill Murray, so... but um. I've seen the the Christian Bale version of Hamlet. Oh. I have never seen that. I didn't even know that existed. Yeah, yeah neither did I, honestly. No, no, there, it's... I saw the version of Hamlet that had, starred a young Helen Bonham Carter. Bonham? Bon Bonham. Bon what, what, what's your Bonham. name? Bonham. 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 Okay, whatever. Bonham. I've just seen that. The both the Romeo and Juliet and much to do about <laughs> nothing. Or much to much do, do about nothing. That's it. I might have seen more. I've never seen Shakespeare in Love, so I don't know what else to <laughs> <laughs> Go figure, it's the two girls. It's like two of the girls who are going on tangents. No, all the guys are like silent at this point. Romeo, Romeo plus Juliet's a good movie, okay? Everybody should I haven't see seen it, so I can't. It's good. I get, oh, okay. <laughs> it's good. And beautifully shot. I have seen parts of that one. Awesome. Seen the There's a fish tank and all kinds of stuff. It is really well shot. It's There's really. You're not describing it's anything not, about the film, you're just not, describing something that's in look, the scenery. It's modern times and it's completely cheesy. <laughs> It's like it's well, like the it's, it's not modern times. It's like the new 90s. it's like the new Resident Evil. <laughs> 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 it was like 1996, but they keep the entire original dialogue from the play. That's what the Hamlet did. Yeah. Too. Yeah. yeah. And well, then, right. Which was horrible. Their swords were guns. <laughs> and yeah. It's still fun. And, they and still the climax the and the climax of the movie, like the way that they did that last competition in the Hamlet movie, was just like. Weird. I, I don't know. Like they they did it better in the more original version. Wait, are you, are, you mean the duel? The like the duel. Yes. Fencing uh, match. That was just a terrible ending. Right. It, right. In the they were they were having a fencing match and then they're just like let's pull out guns now. What, <laughs> what is the point of that? What's the point of the fencing match to begin with? There's no <laughs> point. There is. <isn't>. There is. <laughs> it's just fun. It's just to keep like up the intensity of the end of it, the scene. But they could have done that better. It, it, it's it's kind of it, that, that actually reminds me guns. of uh, <laughs> in Double uh, O Seven Die Another Day because they have a fencing match in that that eventually turns into them grabbing real swords and trying to actually kill each other because it was is between Bond Madonna? and the villain. Die no, that was. Uh, is it, wait, but is it Madonna in one of those James Bond movies? I actually don't know. That was the one that uh, starred Pierce Brosnan, um, and, uh, Halle, Halle Berry. Berry. Yeah, yeah, she's in that. Yeah, yeah, she is. No, no, no! I'm saying that's the one with Madonna in there. Fact. Wait, she was in that movie, or was she? Yeah. Music in her was she? Oh, she, she did, did the music. She did music, and she made herself into that movie as a little cameo. And Where? Was, when? She's a fencing instructor. Pretty sure. Years. No, yeah, no, 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 no. That's really wait. That may have been. Go back and watch. I have to watch. I'm I haven't not, watched I'm it not gonna a long watch time. Because it, it was crappy. Just watch the James Bond stuff. <laughs> Well, yeah, that's true. Anyway, so getting circling all the way back to our main point. Um, I think we're so far where you can't even do that. <laughs> <laughs> James Bond you was originally a book series that got ad ad adapted. Oh, yeah, so we're that's still true. On the, we're still on the theme here. Hey, look at that. Amber's keeping us on track here. See, this is a reason why we brought you here. So, yeah. <laughs> we're still around the area. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> All right, fine. If we're still around the area, I'm going to go back to a small mention that Costa made about the Lord of the Rings. Um, I think those are some of the best examples. Kat is currently putting her head into her hands. Um, I think those are movies of, like, they're some of the best examples of the best adaptations. Because when I went and saw those movies, I really liked them. And then when I went to read the books, I just lost all interest Same halfway here. through, like, not even a quarter way through the book. I was just like... This is all just explained so much easier in the film. I'm just going to watch the film. I think that's how it always works. If you see the film first and go back to the book, you have absolutely no interest in the, in the book but, whatsoever. But Tolkien also goes on forever. Well, right. <laughs> I mean, like, like I said, there, that conversation that takes two minutes in Lord of the Rings to explain is like ten pages. And then there's like... Isn't Frodo like thirty years old before the time he actually goes on his quest? It's in like the book. in the book, it's like it's it's a difference of like fourteen years. When in the movie, it just looks like Gandalf went to uh, went to Gondor overnight and then just came back. <laughs> movie magic, What's Gondor again? 
No, I'm asking. I'm seriously <laughs> asking. What is that? Is that the? Mountain? That's the. It, it was the area with the uh, the, the white pit? city. I don't. I've only seen the movie once. Is, is that the mountain with the fire in it where they drop? No, no. It's in the third movie where they have the Battle of Pelennor Fields, the um, big battle with the elephants. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> I just got totally lost. Yeah, so they you know, do you know how many think, battles were in Lord of the Rings? For, I did. They kept on going. Well, that's why, I specified, that's why I specified with elephants, because I think that was the only scene with I a mean, huge... I remember stuff with that's the last talking one, trees. Right? I don't... I don't <laughs> yeah! Elephants. Elephants. They were like in the Wizard of Oz woods. Like, they were... <laughs> okay, right? we, we have to clarify this, though. Yeah, Cat yeah. was forced to sit through the special edition. Extended, extended edition. By a sadist, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> you should not have done that. You were scarred for life. I think he was trying now. to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> and, and if you have never seen Lord of the Rings before, you should never start off with the extended editions. I because did that because that's part. why you don't like those films. I'm scarred for life. I, think, I think you're in an abusive part. relationship. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, though, no. no. you need to help. <laughs> <laughs> what about that book, Holes? Oh, I yeah, actually like the adaptation. That was a good adaptation. The book was really good. I can talk about that. Okay, Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> I know you do, Tyler. No. Tyler, you have the floor then. Or yeah, go ahead, Tyler. You go first, and then maybe, okay. then Kelly, maybe. Okay. <laughs> I have something to say right now. Uh, you, you just said you had something to talk about. Okay, so we're gonna go back to your house. Sorry, Kelly. Oh, no. Okay. okay. Uh, before that, first question is: Anyone else here ever? Does anyone else here know of Ender's Game? Am I the only person? I've, I've heard of that. Heard of it. It. Okay, yeah. darn. It would have been a good topic because well, I know it's, it's a, coming out. Yeah, it's coming out, but it's a very it's one of the most notorious books to adapt because they tried many times, and it's one of those books where how old is it? It's from the the early eighties. Okay, I for some reason I was thinking it was like something that just came out in the last like ten years, right. and I'm like I've never heard of it, but then other people are like, yeah, it's, it's whatever. It's really good, but it's like it's a science fiction, but it takes place in the future and it's about a genius kid who goes to school with other genius kids in space and they fight. it sounds really ridiculous but it's actually much better than it sounds yeah but part of it is like it's all psychological and it focuses so much on his thoughts that it's actually if you read the book you're going to say to yourself there's no way they can adapt this and they've been trying to adapt it for the, almost the past 10 years and now they're finally it's actually in production now i know harrison ford is supposed to be in it yeah that's all i've heard oh, from he's going to be in it <laughs> bill davis is going to be in it um the kid from hugo is going to be in it Oh wow! And that guy. Some other kid. <laughs> that <laughs> kid. <laughs> that kid. That kid next to Chloe Moretz. Okay. <laughs> but, um, you got a copy there. So yeah. Did you have something <laughs> to say, Kelly? Well, I'm, I'm, I had something to say about holes. I don't know. What, oh, yeah. I don't know what you're talking about, Brianna. I'm sorry. Well, I can get back. <laughs> go back. Go back, to go back to holes. <laughs> get back in the hole. Oh my god. <laughs> just go. Just say it's good. I mean, <laughs> The only movie with Shia LaBeouf I actually like. Yeah, actually, he, yeah, he was pretty good in that one. That was a movie that uh, made me think he might have a promising career. Me too. That, that <laughs> and, was then was yeah. and then you uh, yeah. yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, that was before Michael Bay blew him up. Yeah. Uh, exposure. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's but, before, like, Eagle Eye and all But what were you going to say stuff. about it, though? Like, what I just it, thought it was good. It was good. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but had you read the book before, yeah, though? Yeah, I read the book Oh, okay. And I thought it... I mean, it was too long ago, but I'm pretty sure it followed the book. Like, it, was, it did. Oh, pretty, and also, just exactly. as a side note, close. because the one thing about him is that, and we'll get to this when we get to our uh, our audience responses, <laughs> is that the writer of the book what was it Lewis Schaefer? Schaefer. Schaefer. He also did the screenplay for the movie. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. That's, well, that's oh, that helps a lot. I'm sorry. Well, like, well, and on a completely, you know, not completely random side note, but any movie that has Henry Winkler in it is just awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and, and anytime you get a Fonzie sighting in a film, it just instantly upgrades the coolness factor. Kind of like Bill Murray. Every time I either see Fonzie or hear the word Fonzie, I just instantly go, hey! <laughs> just without, it's like a reflex now. Exactly. <laughs> the funny thing about Holes is that before Louis Satcher was brought on to take control of it and like watch over it. It was originally gonna be like like the holes in name only. Like it was gonna take place in yeah. post apocalyptic future. The oh. kids are in a prison camp and they're okay. doing like it was wow. gonna be like um wow. like that Stephen King movie where they're breaking out of prison. I can't remember. Oh, um Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I I, I know <laughs> no, the I name. I, I blocked out of the name. It was like that movie, I'm forgetting. But um uh, it's got it's got um 
God in it. Morgan Freeman, yes. Yep. <laughs> God equals Morgan Freeman. The, um, uh, fuck. <laughs> Mile. It's, it's not the. It was. Like, yeah, we'll have to look it up. The wait, wait, wait. What are we looking up now? Stephen King prison movie. Morgan Freeman. It's not Green Mile. <laughs> no. Not, not, not Shawshank Redemption. Yes, I was going to say that. I was going to say that. Tyler, I was going to say that. Tyler, I was we couldn't yeah. think of it because our clues were God and Morgan Freeman. <laughs> I told you, um, prison movies. God, God is Morgan Freeman. Freeman. <laughs> you guys in prison and Morgan Haven't you Freeman seen Bruce Almighty? I mean, come on. His or Evan Almighty? Oh, wait, nobody God. has seen that movie. Never mind. I thought it was good, dude. <laughs> I saw it. Really? You guys I really saw here. Evan Almighty? I did. Why? I saw it on cable. I, 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 I watched, tried watching it on TV. I couldn't sit through it. Same here, I couldn't. But that's not an adaptation, so. No, it's not. But, uh... What about... What about the Secret Garden? Oh my that? god! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It's been a while. I don't think I ever, I ever read the book because I saw the movie and like I can't read this book. Yeah. <laughs> but the only thing I remember from that movie was the girl, poor, comes on like a train or whatever, is like basically abused by her like father. There's a got kid that can't like walk. It's dipped in like a cold bath. Oh, we found the garden. My mom used, to, but she's dead. But this used to be my mom's garden. I don't know. I don't know if they start planning. I can't remember that far. But the garden comes back, and the father's like, oh, "Okay, I'll talk to you." I'm sorry, I was such an abusive father. You remember yes. way more than me. I just remember like a big door to the garden. And yeah, it was train. hidden. It was hidden. Does that make sense? I don't remember. I should probably watch that movie, but I don't. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I have seen that movie, but I feel like. I, I don't remember where or when I saw it. There's like, I just remember like the like 90s, probably a 90s version of it. I'm, yeah. Or maybe, hopefully there's only one version of that. <laughs> no, no. I, I think, I think that is the only version. version. I think. Oh, well, I mean, I maybe I we should have watched that one. Version. I, I, remember, I remember a long time ago in uh, elementary school watching a, um, long before I would even read any of the books or anything, watching a little animated short of Lord of the Rings that was meant for kids. Uh, yeah. Ralph, was it Ralph Bakshi? Uh, yeah, Ralph Bakshi. Yeah. Is that, is yeah. that who it was? Because all, all I remember was Frodo was sitting at the table and somebody asked him, what happened to your middle finger? Finger, And then like, or and then it cut to the scene of him like, like becoming invisible to bypass like the entry gates or something like that. And when I watch that movie now and I think back to that cartoon, I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah, that is not the that. plot of the movie at and all. It's all like mice and stuff like that, right? Well, right. Yeah, yeah. Right. It, it was a kid. It was a kid's animated. animated yeah, and they you know, didn't finish it. Did they? No, they didn't. <laughs> they never got. They never got to that fiery mountain. <laughs> That's all I remember from it. They were just going to a fiery mountain. <laughs> they, they were just died. going to a fiery mountain. <laughs> now, see, I've never read The Hobbit, and I'm, like I've that's the it. big I've film coming out. I'm trying to read it. It's like. It's like, not that long. I've never read any of the Lord like of the Rings. It's like middle school or elementary school. I only... It I is? Hard reading. In elementary school? That's well, it depends on where it. you go. I, mean, I was <laughs> reading Goosebumps. I'm oh, I remember Goosebumps. Goosebumps. That's, that's, some, that's, some, that's some good... Yeah. Adaptation. There was like one that's Goosebumps. good adaptation yeah. right there, right? Yeah. They're trying to. R.L. Stein, I think he signed a deal where they are trying to adapt and to make a Goosebumps movie. I don't know. Yeah, just one general but movie? They, no, but I, don't, I think just a general movie. They had, they yeah, that was no, the TV show. No, those were the episodes. Those were the TV shows. Yeah, but they oh, were okay. each, the, but they, each episode was a book, though. Yeah. So yeah. how would they make yeah. a movie? No, this was going to be like a, I think it's going to be like probably, an anthology thing where like a kid, it's going to yes. be like. I'm going to see that. <laughs> I think. I'm not sure. I think. I want to see that. You better be right it. Because I'm going to go see that. I'm going to be like, number one movie I want to go see. <laughs> We're all going to be like at the front of the line at the midnight like, premiere. Like, ghost bumps! <laughs> <laughs> great. That'd be awesome. But but it's like, but my, my thought is though, like, how in the world do you split The Hobbit up into three separate films and if we're all assuming that the films are going to follow the peter jackson style of three and a half hour long films well, he's, isn't he the one that said that it's he has so much content that that's what he said that's up. he said that he filmed so much that he had enough for three but, films but i just don't understand like like i people have been saying oh well they're going to need it because it's so detailed the book's so detailed because just yeah. descriptions and stuff and i go okay but like, but if it's shorter than all the other Lord of the Rings books... That's why you have the books. extended editions for Cat to be abused by the watch. Like, <laughs> there is a will, there is a way. Again, money, And it's money. money. And that's money. what I was going to exactly. say. First I thought it was going to be two. First I heard that's two. What, because that's said, what they said. And then they said three. And then mm -hmm. I'm like, I 
So you're just making Lord of the Rings all over again. Right. Remember, They're trying to basically. bring it back in HD quality. The the um, the idea of splitting a movie up into multiple parts that shouldn't be broken up into multiple parts is also the same reason for the remakes. Uh, Continue. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, so I mean, I mean, what what is the gray area, I guess, when it comes to defining what's the best way to adapt a film? Is it to adapt it to the film goers or to the the core audience of the I think well, if, you, if you if you gear it towards the the core audience because it's because like I said the the regular moviegoers have never read any of the books or whatever they it's all just about the overall experience if if you can actually take all the important content from a book and translate it to a film then then that's that's the ultimate goal but but for some reason you know. You, you, they never seem to get that right balance. I mean, it, it right. doesn't and, always work. Right, and see, that's and that's where the Harry Potter films struggled over the years because the first two films were followed pretty close to the books and they were decently understandable. But one of the one of the uh, criticisms of the films was that it didn't really have character because it was just all plot. And really, if you do watch those films. It's like everything they say is plot, 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 and then there's like well, a small side bit of their character. You've also got thirteen-year-old actors too, but that's just <laughs> well, like, oh, okay, <laughs> but okay, but. But you're so. taking into consideration that I mean, there, there's been like I said, like we said before, like there's been adaptations since the beginning of of cinema and even before that with like plays and stuff. But even though we're at Harry Potter, even though like I've only read the first book and the third book. And the third book was a pretty good adaptation. I mean, yeah. it's a good series altogether. Mm -hmm. Mind you, if you haven't read the book, even though I fell asleep through the second one. But <laughs> other than oh, that, the second I mean, one was one of the best that, ones. They're, they're, they're good movies. They'll mm -hmm. be around forever. Yeah. Um, but, In I general. mean, we have to think that there are other movies that are supposed adaptations that did not follow the book that are better. Like, you have, like, The Shining, which Stanley Kubrick mm -hmm. completely changed around. Stephen King oh, was yes. pissed off about it. But that's a great movie. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, what was it, like 15, 20 years later, King decided to do a solid adaptation of his book and nobody liked it. Yeah. And then you have something like, say, The Wizard of Oz, which has been adapted twice mm -hmm. as a silent and then the one that we all know. Doesn't, also the TV series, too. Yeah. Doesn't follow the books. Right. There's so many book series. It could have been like Harry Potter, but they didn't. And then and switched it around, turned it into a musical... And, and it's not... Well, right, and yeah. also, actually, a very similar sort of point is the Willy Wonka films. Willy Wonka? Yeah. I was just about to say, the, like, well, Wild Dog. Yeah. And uh, even though... Like, the original Willy Wonka uh, is, is, is not really yeah. like the books. The, the Tim Burton one is closer. It's closer, it's but, I think, like but I think a lot of people view the original Willy Wonka <laughs> film as the better film. It's just... In general. Yeah. I mean, there's... Uh, right, but see, yeah. but see, and that brings up another interesting point. Which Charlie and the, tri and the Chocolate Factory is closer to the is closer to the books, and that's fine. Yeah. But I know when I watched Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, I was just like, I this, this just feels awful. But you like, <laughs> you like the, you know, the one, the musical one. There's a lot, like Ronald... Ron, Ronald Dahl, I think, Ronald is Dahl. yeah, has mm -hmm. had a lot of adaptations of his books. Yeah, like mm -hmm. the witches and what happened. Uh, witches Angela was great. Houston, who, I thought oh. the witches was great. He apparently fantastic, Mr. Fox. He apparently he thought it was <laughs> well made up until the point where the ending that was and changed, and he boycotted around. the movie as soon as he heard about that, that which was me. incredible because I thought it was one of his <laughs> most tightly adapted uh, adaptations of his. Yeah. Well, I've actually got a question. In the case of trying, it will you know when. What was your first experience with Charlie and Chocolate? Did you see the the Gene Wilder film first, oh, yeah. or did you read the book first? Uh, I, I saw the Gene I saw Gene Wilder, Gene Wilder, then Wilder. read the book, and then when I, which I read the book like in elementary school, and then but I didn't care that it was. Whatever. I think when it comes, the one thing we can actually um, draw from this, I think if you're talking about how well a film is adapted, I think it also depends on you know. If you were, like, were you around when the book, for, like, which one did you experience first? You know, yeah. in the case, I mean, obviously the book came first, and a lot of us, you know, because where we fall in the age gap, saw the movie first. Yeah. Most likely. And I remember, like, that was one of my favorite movies when I was a kid. I love <laughs> yes. the first, you know, the, the Gene Wilder version. And, you know, it it was so great. And then I can remember, and I, I've read the book, and then when I saw the, the Tim Burton version, 
the whole time, the only thing I could think of is, wow, Johnny Depp seems like a total pedophile in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 The, they had interesting casting stories. Like, they they wanted to get some other people I can't remember, and then Marilyn Manson, out of nowhere, said, I want this role. I do want it. And they were like, nope. <laughs> so it could have been a lot creepier. But, right. Yeah. Yeah. But, I don't know. I like them for different reasons. I like both yeah. of them. I actually but, like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, but I, I like it because it's, it's different. Than the I mean, I mind like I like that it like he de like decided to be like I'm gonna adapt it closer to what it is, and they go up yeah. in the glass elevator and everything like that. Though it, I, the other one is just more interesting. It's yeah. just like it's they well, decided to turn it into a musical, and some and it kind of like did the whole thing like what The Wizard of Oz did, where it. They switch it all around. We're gonna put music to it, which sometimes, like today, probably wouldn't go very well. Yeah. No, probably. But not. it did it, and it's but it's it's a beloved movie. So technically, it, why would you do it? But see, and a lot of the things that I thought killed Charlie and the Chocolate Factory was the role was Johnny Depp in the main role because this is, he's coming off the heels of you know Pirates of the Caribbean, um, and I think a. I can't remember all of the roles that he did with Tim Burton in that mm -hmm. short time period, but he did a lot. So, and Pirates of the Caribbean really exposed Johnny Depp, like, you, you know, like, it g gave him popularity, so that's what made some of his later films work, and that's what brought a lot of attention to the Charlie and Chocolate Factory, but he just doesn't play that interesting of a character, character to me. His character but didn't seem interesting. He has and then, to go up against Gene Wilder's character. Oh, okay, okay, and that's fine, but there are ways you can do that Without how they did it in this movie, do you, do you see? Do you see what I mean? Yeah, no, like they, yeah. like they made, they just, they didn't make him an enjoyable character. I did not find his character enjoyable to watch. I wasn't, I wasn't like laughing at his anti antics or like I wasn't like you know turn off by how weird he was. Like I wasn't freaked out by him or anything. So they couldn't find. I couldn't find where I should support this character, where why I should like this character. And then he, they throw in that weird subplot with his father that just made I no sense. I don't even sense. think that was even well, in the book. Well, yeah, well, right. Be, like, likable in the book, though? That's my question. I don't know. I can't remember if he was... I, I mean, it's been forever since I've read the book, but... I don't, can't remember if he was likable or not. I don't know, but... I, well, one interesting thing that just popped in my head was... I would actually like to... Because, well... What 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 year was the first um, movie, the Gene Wilder version? That was sixty five. It was like six, like late sixties, early seventies. Yeah. Because yeah. here's my thing: because we're, we're talking about adaptations and the idea of like hardcore fans, like this idea of like fanboyism and just being really hardcore into something. Nineteen sixty four. Nineteen sixty four. Okay. Now this is a, a not thought: the uh, fanboyism or being like hardcore fans. I, obviously, people would say like the origin of that is Star Wars. Like when the when the Star Wars films came around in the in the seventies, when the Star Wars films came around in the seventies, that's when the idea of like the hardcore dedicated fan started. And obviously, Star Wars, I mean, you could argue whether entirely original or not, and in, in concept. But now you have like these groups of people that just develop, and all of a sudden they're extremely dedicated to this one thing. And then now you have like all this really tough criticism about adaptations. So that's the thing, the Charlie and Chocolate Factory. You know, while not being completely related to the book, came before that period, which is why people don't criticize it as much for being directly, you know, related to the to the plot of the, of the story. And I think that that's that's uh, um, you know I don't want to say I'm I'm right, but I just thought it's an interesting <laughs> thought. You know, because I mean, just think about it. Like, it, criticism of adaptation comes from fanboyism and hard, you know, and being a true fan, and it kind of starts with Star Wars, and this culture develops. And people, right. when when you read the book and you're dedicated, you want to get that same great experience when you go see the movie. Well, and also too, especially nowadays, it like because a lot of us have you know the Harry Potter films spanned a decade, and a lot of us grew up in that decade. So whether or not we were fans of the books or not, um, we've had to hear about these films and. And, like, we've had seven chances to view these films as opposed, you know, to their source material. And so I think that's where criticism of adaptations has also grown just within our own generation, well, too. I think it's, it's grown and, in the last, I, I want to say, like, 15 years. I mean, like you said, like, you did have Star Wars, which was, I mean, that was, that's, like, a, that's like its own religion now, basically. Right. It is I mean, it's, and it did, <laughs> yes, it, right? I remember that. I mean, it... it, it 
and that was. I want to become a Jedi. Mid <laughs> mid seventies, I guess, when the first one came out, and you know, it it did it, it, it helped with what was the blockbuster or one of those movies that mm -hmm. created what is now called blockbuster, but not the, not the chain because right. it's dead right. now. God <laughs> but um, you have you have movies like that and that have always had you know that geek co culture, mm -hmm. but for a while though. You had, you know, you still had the stigma of like, well, you, you know, you're Star Wars, whatever, you know, mm -hmm. Star Trek, all that stuff. Like, it, they were ostracized, and then it isn't until like, you know, the with the comic books and everything, mm -hmm. and even though with like uh, the not the remakes, but the the revival of like the right. the new Star Wars and stuff. Even though it got in, you know, whatever you want to say about it, I'm not a Star Wars fan. Mm -hmm. I appreciate what Lucas did mm -hmm. in the cinema, but. <laughs> Be quiet. I'm no. giving her the evil eye for all like you listeners. Angry. <laughs> no, I I have my own problems with Lucas, <laughs> but yeah, don't like Star Wars. We've had this conversation like before on, and not I'm not saying the the movies itself. I'm saying Lucas being the asshole of holding back the original content. All right, fine. Good. Fine. Anyway, <laughs> uh, what I was like, going back to? I will concede Like I said, the 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 last people. like fifteen years and stuff because of the development of of how uh, movie studios and the entertainment industry have suddenly you know taken like with comic book and anything with geek culture and stuff and realizing that you know it's it's profitable so taken more seriously. If you like, you said fifteen years ago, if they're like, hey, let's make whatever movie superhero they'd be like well it, it doesn't it's not going to sell well, now it will because of whatever you know well i think the idea the one thing with stars like i said you had the comic book culture the fans of batman superman all that you know going back to the you know 40s and 50s and and you know further on but i think star wars made the idea of being obsessive about something and dedicated to something okay yeah like it was ostracized at first but then you know but then it just all well, of a sudden... Star it, Trek, too. Right, yeah, that yeah. Star Trek. Yeah. Basically, the, the, the idea of, of hardcore fan culture started in the 70s. Even though the content for what we know now is hardcore fan culture, whether you're a Marvel or a DC fan or what have you, that it all started with Star Wars. All of a sudden, being this fan that dressed mm -hmm. up and went to these conventions and just celebrated the, the culture of whatever pop culture thing you, you enjoyed... It all of a sudden became tolerated and accepted. You know, yeah. Everything has everybody here has something that they're really passionate about, like whether it's a band or a book or movie, and they'll want to buy and watch and read whatever there is about it. And the more passionate you are about something, the more critical you'll be. And that's why adaptations just become really difficult when when a director says, "I want to adapt something," they're playing with fire, mm -hmm. you know, and it can either burn them or, you know, they're going to end up walking away with piles and piles of money in their pockets. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. All right. We are totally interactive here on our podcast, and we posted this discussion actually on our forum, on our uh, group pages, on MyUMBC. And I would just want to point out this comment that was left by Valencia Maynard, is her name, I believe? Or his? I'm not sure. <laughs> her. The, her, okay. Yeah. I, I was pretty sure. I was just, <laughs> you never know sometimes. There, you know, there are guys named Christina out there. So, the writer of the book or original material should write the script, and that person should also assist in casting. I think that is why every bad film adaptation could be solved if these two things had happened. That is why Perks of Being a Wallflower is going to rock. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah, that is, that is a really good book. book. I just That's actually read that book over the summer, and it was interesting. I, I haven't read it. And we also talked about that's why Holes was so good because the writer of the book also wrote the movie. Right, and so. and also too, um, the Harry Potter seven dash one and dash two, J.K. Rowling had you know almost full on, on set well, because she you was, know she uh, got she, to watch over the script, how they did everything for those last. Because she films. was disappointed that I think like yeah. I think she was disappointed with, with uh, five and six because they well they, they almost out. cut out creature. So oh, oh, right, she sort yeah. of had to step in right, at one and, point. And, and she was just because she felt like, you know, some important content was being left out. So And she had every right to do so, and that's why those films I are think there might be a case where authors might be slightly intimidated, though, to try and adapt their films. So I, I mean, as much as, as I think 
you know, she's right in that if, if the author of the book steps in and does the majority of the writing for the script, it'll be better. But I think there is a level of intimidation behind it, though, for some authors, which is why most of them probably haven't. I mean, I know I'd be scared of shit Well, what if it. you take something like you like authors, but we're seeing a lot like now with like the comic books and stuff. How do you do something with that, where you have all these comic books that have different writers now? Well, I think you. Well, writers. I think yeah, you, yeah. yeah right. Exactly like, what they do you know, in the Batman films or what they did with the Spider-Man films. You have to choose the strongest storylines and the strongest characters. Nolan chose the Joker because he was one of the strong. He was, you know, but, virtually I mean, the strongest well, Batman bil villain in the comics. But you can have like the strongest villains and stuff. But if you, they're your writers incompetent of of understanding it, then that doesn't mean anything. And that's I mean, true. you can have. Mm -hmm. You know, you could have a Joker movie, even though it turned out great, but if you just, like, I'm going to put a Joker movie in Well, in the case of The Dark Knight, I think Christopher Nolan took, like, the, the key concepts and ideas of the relationship between Batman and Joker and adapted them mm -hmm. really well. Same thing we were talking about last week with The, um, with the Dark Knight Rises, how you know, if you have Bane as the main villain... You know, you, he has to break Batman's back. Like, there's no question about it. Right. You, know, you, you, you Well, so, and once again, that's the strongest storyline associated with the character right. of Bane. Even though it doesn't so, follow the rest of the comic book. Yeah. Like, well, yeah, right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. But, but just, if you're going to have Bane in that movie, mm -hmm. that's the there's not a single yeah. fan that didn't, th that didn't imagine Bane breaking Batman. And let's, I mean, the way they portrayed it in the film was pretty good. Well, right. So. Yeah, they, and that's the fan service right there, because you would have had, like I said, the fanboys mm -hmm. going up and flames like, how can you have Bane? Why do you think everybody hated Spider-Man 3? <laughs> <laughs> okay, and on that note, we do have to wrap this up. So thank you for joining us for another Filmmakers Anonymous podcast. Amber, thank you very no much for coming by and uh, giving us, you know, some uh, battle with your other podcast. This, uh, this podcast <laughs> will be heavily censored. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Sorry. Thank you for coming by and making I'm our show to TV. I'm my other podcast. <laughs> well, this is a college, so... <laughs> <laughs> no restrictions. I say shit like five times <laughs> in a row. I have to run the counter like in South Park. <laughs> <laughs> ding, 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 ding. All right, so once again, if you guys would like to follow us, you can find us on Facebook under UMBC's Filmmakers Anonymous. Tweet us at UMBCFA. We'd like to hear about you, what topics you would like us to cover in future podcasts. And please stay tuned for future podcasts. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> come on, come on. We're fun at Filmmakers Anonymous. What's her name again? We're Filmmakers Anonymous. So come to our film club and don't go to class. Doesn't matter anyway, cause you shall not pass!